I'm all alone. Oh, oh. Is anybody there? There, there. John, John, John. I also went for a piss. I thought I'd save you the trouble of you hearing me pissing. Hello and welcome to episode 114 of the Character Unlock podcast. I am John and hosting this time out with my exceptional co-hosts, Brooker. Hello, mate. And Lee. Hello. Gentlemen, how are we this second week of March? We are in the second week of March. That's pretty much how it feels. (laughs) I am also in the second week of March. (laughs) It's just like... It's good that we're all on the same page. Yeah, I mean, th- is there anything else like for this week that, well, just in general, like how we're feeling this year? It's just, it's just, it's just more of it. it just it's, keeps on going. Yeah, I, <laughs> I keep waiting for things to kind of ease off a little bit, and it's not happening. Instead, it's getting worse. So, so the only thing that I have that's amusingly going forwards is that uh, going on Facebook and. <laughs> And and seeing a colleague of ours uh, posting constantly about how closer we are to being able to go down to the pub. Uh, I'm I'm guessing that's going to be the same colleague that I have pretty much permanently muted because I don't want to see his shit. Yeah, I'm, I'm very oh, close yeah. to doing the same thing. We have planned a lads barbecue on the 29th, which is the first day that you're allowed to meet up to six people outside your house. Which unfortunately falls on a Monday, so I'm pretty sure that the Tuesday, everyone's booking off sick. So you'll be calling in sick for that one then, yeah? Yeah, <laughs> you've got a funny feeling we are, yeah. Everyone books off that day as sick, and suddenly there's no coronavirus in the world. Yeah, one of my friends has already told his subordinate staff at work that he's not expecting them to turn up or do any work on the Tuesday. Bloody hell. <laughs> Which is cool. That's fair play, I guess. I mean... If if he's going to be going out, you might as well expect the rest of your staff to do it. I think he said. He's, I think he also said, or oh, da, da da whether it was in jest that if he receives any emails from them on that on the Tuesday, they're sacked. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant, genius, really. We uh, so we I think I can't remember if I said it on the podcast before, but we we booked a holiday like this time last year because obviously we we got locked down last year and went oh, in a year's time it will be fine. So we booked a holiday, and then here we are. Absolutely mm-hmm. fucking not. <laughs> Rubbing so, it close. I know, and every every time I I open up BBC News or or switch on the TV, and someone goes, "Oh, the the transport minister says it's still too early to be booking foreign holidays." I'm like, Eek, but does that mean a year ago was really too early? Well, I mean, there's so many of those uh, companies like. I've been uh, advertising off their jab and go fairs. Jab it's like it's literally get get yourself a, a a vaccine, and then you can go fucking fly wherever you like. I I don't I, I'm not really one to panic about stuff like this, but I'm I'm kind of sitting there going, well, okay, the holiday's costing me a fair amount. If I haven't got my jab, they're going to expect like negative tests. Before I fly in both directions, that's three of us at two hundred pound a pop twice. Woohoo! So that'd be all my holiday spending money spent on tests. Uh, yeah, and I'm more worried about every other fucking idiot who has decided that now they can go abroad. They're just going to be cramming their way into airports, and I'm just going to die. So. Yeah, it's. Uh... You're going to spend a fortune trying to get yourself a, a COVID test sorted out, and there's going to be loads of people there who are saying that they've uh, they've got a negative COVID test when in reality they probably haven't even tried. Yep. Or they they're going to be carrying the virus because they've been vaccinated against it, but they can still carry it. Although I'm I'm curious what happens if I go to Tenerife and then can't come back to the UK because I get a positive test. Do I get to just stay in the hotel forever? Because if that's the case. Uh, I will make a positive test somehow. 
I wonder if my yes, travel insurance will cover me for it. I was going to say, it's probably going to be quite expensive. Your travel insurance <laughs> probably won't cover that. In fact, it's probably in writing now that if you get a positive COVID test while overseas, you're fucked. To be fair, I'm more worried about when I get back, because currently the rules are when I get back, I have to quarantine for 10 days and work won't allow me to just work from home for that 10 days. I have to take it as leave. Which is weird, isn't it? Which, considering I, I can understand. work from home. Yeah, it's the same for us as well. Even though I can work from home, I have to quarantine and I can't work. It's like, well, I can still work. I've worked from home for a year. I've yeah. literally not set foot in the office for a year. <laughs> and yet you're telling me I have to have two weeks off if I go on holiday. You're having a giraffe. Pretty much my exact reaction. Yeah. I think it's probably because they kind of see it as if you're in quarantine, you shouldn't be working because you're quarantined. You're sick. Or in some capacity. Or, like, but who knows? I don't know. Just, but it's yeah. just them covering their own ass, I guess. Oh, yeah, of course it from is. Working from home while you may or may not be in the in fit state. Because if okay. you're quarantined, there's a possibility you're going to end up with COVID. Well, that's it. It, it 100% opens you up to be sued if you're working with COVID. And die yeah. at your kitchen table, <laughs> logged into work. Yeah, because you didn't call and contact the local <laughs> hospital to say, you know yeah. what, I think I might be dying. But yeah, that's how I am. <laughs> Sitting here on tenterhooks, yeah. wondering if I can go on holiday in July. It's just refresh, slowly refreshing the BBC news feed, going, come on, please, yeah. please. <laughs> uh and Lee's got his barbecue sorted out. So it's just kind of me that's got nothing. Because I'm not planning anything. Like, I'm not even planning my next trip up to see my mum. Until I have some kind of, like, firm confirmation that uh, everything's going to be fine. Which, considering both her and my stepdad have had their first jabs. Oh, but that, that was the other one. So my mum and dad have both had their first jabs. They had them six weeks ago. I think. Yeah. My uh, my my dad tested positive for COVID at the weekend, <laughs> mm-hmm. and my and my mum has been like dying of this hacking fucking cough for the last fortnight as well. I had had our family Skype call recently, and she was coughing her lungs up. Man, it was grim. Like, don't fucking tell me you haven't got COVID. I don't care how many negative tests you give me. Not a <laughs> chance. But yeah, that was that's. That kind of when you go, oh yeah, you had your you had your first vaccine, excellent. Oh, oh, okay, but you still got COVID. Uh, cool. I mean, that's the that is the best time to get COVID is when you've had the first jab. Yeah. That is yeah. Because I mean, t- I suppose the worst time to get COVID is after you've had the second one. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if it's like several weeks afterwards. Yeah. At that point, you think. Fuck, I am the one percent. Yeah. But not the good one percent. <laughs> but such is uh, life. It is what it is. Yes it is. Um so a little bit of news, Mr. Lee Jingleman. Jingle. Wow. Uh, yeah. It's, it's getting worse each Pulled time. Pulled out all the stops for that one. It's getting worse. Pulled out all the stops. Didn't even change your tone across all of it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry. Jingle. Much better. Although kind yeah. of gay. Yep. Cool. Okay. Insufficient Oprah Winfrey. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. So first, um, the acquisition of Zenimax Media by Microsoft. That's all done and dusted. After the EU said, "Yeah, it's fine," and the um, US equivalent uh, were who were less worried about it, I think. I'm pretty sure the EU were just sort of checking against uh, Monopoly law rulings yeah. and all that. Because yeah. it's a big fucking thing that Microsoft are buying yeah, in the gaming world. Yeah. Like, the, the second or third biggest studio in video gaming. Well, yeah, because uh, if they were just buying Bethesda, they probably wouldn't have a problem. But because they're buying ZeniMax, which is a massive umbrella company for a lot of places. Uh, yeah, yeah, the Monopoly's board needs to have a look. And, you know, it's like, as the wanting to buy Tesco, it, 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 you know, 
there gets to a point where there's no competition anymore. It's just too big. Yeah. So, but yeah, that's that's happened. I. Yeah, I mean, it's. I I just like the the fact that my, even in like all of the post, um, acquisition, news marketing strategy stuff, they've they've been sticking with their guns of not like not hamstringing the studios and saying you can only make Xbox games. It's it's going to be um multi format multi platform games going everywhere which which it, it's good for the gamer it's going to be yeah. brilliant when you when you start seeing games uh on PlayStation with uh Xbox Game Studios branding on them what was it what was it they said before didn't they say like first better or best on Xbox yeah or first better like or best on Xbox it basic i'm pretty sure it just means that all future Zenimax Media Games will be on Game Pass because they're an Xbox studio. Yeah, I think first will probably just equate to maybe months, if that. It's not going to be like a it comes out on Xbox for a year, but it'll be. But that's going to be a lot more like the smaller games, I think, rather than the huge ones. Like um, when Four Guys eventually comes over to Xbox, it's only been. Six months? A year? Yeah, Four Guys would have been... been about a year. Yeah. And it's coming to the Xbox at some point. Um, when uh, Among Us finally gets put onto Xbox. But it's, Among it's Us been is out slightly for a different now. Among Us has been out for yeah. two years and suddenly got big. Yeah, it got big and then Microsoft threw a lot of money at them with the yeah. Game Pass thing. But if that's what it's going to be, is that these games are going to be coming on Xbox... First, better or best on Xbox, I think, is an amusing, an amusing marketing marketing strategy. First, obvious, uh, better on Xbox means that it's probably better. Just they mean these best better console wise, and best I'm going to go with probably not coming out on PC in some way or another. Yeah, I, I'm fine with however they want to do it. I, there's a few Bethesda games I like. If I'm desperate to play it, I'll play it on Game Pass or. Buy it on Xbox. If not, I can wait. I... I'm going to have to stop boycotting Bethesda, aren't I? I mean, I think it's silly that you do anyway because you're missing out on some genuinely great games. That's true. I mean, not all of them are going to be to your taste, but there are some gems in there. I I, I totally agree that there are definitely some brilliant games on there, but my, my boycott of Bethesda is... is It's a principle that I kind of have, um, and I'm probably going to end up having to lose it because... It's it's probably still going to be about the same, but with it, Zenimax not publishing anymore and it being under Microsoft stuff, there might end up being more finished games being put out there. Yeah. I don't know. Perhaps. Because it's always, it's always been my, my huge and biggest issue with everything that's come out from Bethesda is that the games are hilariously unfinished before uh, they launch them. Yeah, so the, and, I, and, they I think, get, and they get no shit for it either. I think the games that Bethesda Game Studios make yeah. come out like that, but the games that they publish not necessarily. And I think that's that's a, a distinction that needs to be made because like half the games that I love that Bethesda have made, well, I don't love a single game that Bethesda Game Studios have actually made. All of the Bethesda games I like are games that Bethesda have published. Yeah, and all of them, or well, most of them, came out in almost a hundred percent quality. Yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, this uh, this acquisition has essentially made itself uh, a set. Well, it's basically just their bankrolling Zenimax to make more games. But I'm because Zenimax have been circling a little bit for money, um, and wasn't the I don't know who it was. It was either a former director or COO has uh, recently died. Yeah, Robert Altman. Yeah. CEO yeah, this is and a... founder or co-founder, I think he was. Yeah. So there, that's um, some bad news for them, but at the same time, it's some, some good news has come not too long afterwards, so it's it's good for them. Uh, yeah. With, a, poss- Max, with a possible presentation tomorrow. Cool. Uh, there, there's... I think like a rumor 
Oh no! Uh, oh no! No one's sorry. I'm reading the thing. Uh, there are rumours that there's going to be a, a like a, a Bethesda Xbox Game Pass presentation tomorrow, Thursday, but nothing's been confirmed yet. I'm assuming we're, we're into Wednesday night and they still haven't confirmed it. It's probably not happening, but we'll see. Yeah, I'm going to go with it's probably something they've had planned for a while, but they're just kind of waiting on the, the yes from yeah. both the EU and the and the US to say that yeah, it's fine. So they're just like going to something to put out, It'll be a, a nice chunky press release to go out probably at this point now on Friday. Yeah. Well, I mean it's too could still come tomorrow. Let's be honest, they're they're both American studios, so it's uh, they've still got a good couple of hours left of the day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but um, as a, as an aside, when I mentioned the uh, the fact that the games are still going to be coming out on PlayStation, I found out that MLB The Show is coming out on Xbox this year. Yeah, man. Mm. So there's going to be a, a Sony PlayStation Studios game on Xbox. Yep. So uh, we're we're finally in that point of uh, cross platform for all. Well, people have been calling for it for a long time, and yeah. you know. <laughs> Let's be honest about this. The only people that don't want PlayStation games on Xbox and Xbox games on PlayStation are fanboys. Yep. Everybody else wants their games everywhere because that makes them fucking money. <laughs> well, yeah. Let's 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 be fair. It's uh, there's no reason to not have games available on every console. I, exclusive to sell consoles. I I get that, but. Consoles don't make money the way that games do. Yeah. MLB The Show might be a great game. MLB The Show ain't selling consoles. No. And MLB The Show will probably make more money being on all of the consoles because it's probably not played it because I don't have don't have a PlayStation. Um, but if it has any form of microtransactions in it, in any kind of way, then there's that's money. Free money. Because if it has like its own equivalent of Ultimate Team in some way, where you buy buy players for your yeah, I, and play online in whatever way, I don't know. I don't think it does, but I haven't played it. Yeah, it's that's all. It, it's the easiest way of making money now is to sell invisible currency, uh, and or. With actually no, actually the easiest way of making money right now is the new seasons yep. system that everyone seems to have, where you you buy a season with invisible currency, and it's drip fed content that is otherwise available even if you don't pay for it. Yep. It's just hard to get it, or harder to get it unless you pay for a season pass. So, yeah, thank you, Fortnite. <laughs> um. Our second bit of news, um, and I'm going to have to lean heavily on Leafy at this one, is that the Avengers game is somehow getting worse. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Crystal Dynamics announced that they were altering the XP uh, rewarding, which would scale everything from level 30 to 50 to make it more difficult to get to level 50. And... They're doing a couple of other things to make the loot better, but essentially they were were going to be removing some loot as well, but you'd get more tailored loot or some shit, I don't know. But basically, they're making a practically dead game more difficult and longer and grindier without adding actually any more content for you to grind in. Good, good. So, great idea from them. So, that's, that's a staple of most games, when they eventually go free to play, because um, Star Wars: The Old Republic did that when it went free to play, but it was after it went free to play that it did it. Where the first ten levels are easy to get for everyone, you then need to pay their whatever subscription service was. Like I'm guessing WoW has a similar thing to essentially unlock the ability to carry on leveling at that rate. Otherwise, you get 10% of the XP that you were getting before and you have to and it requires 10 times the amount of XP so it's essentially a, a, a net loss of 100 on your XP mm-hmm. for, for leveling up unless you paid 
like three pounds a month or whatever it was. I think it was like forty quid for the year. Um to essentially be able to level up as the normal rate until you hit the max level because obviously there was one. So Avengers has essentially done that but without having the free to pay mechanic in first. Well it sure looks like they're going to go that way free to play uh there's been no confirmations about it obviously but it definitely looks like they're going to push for that i mean because there's no fucking playing it it was hard enough to get a match when i was playing it when it was released but i mean it's been out for six months they've only released one dlc character and them and her missions were ultimately boring as fuck uh, i didn't even finish them and i look i like the game as but the you know like I said multiple times the grind was just fucking shit already it was shit and I only got one character to level fifty <laughs> on making it worse. So Crystal Dynamics came back and went, you know what you need, you need yeah, it to be to slower, do it more. Yeah, you need to play so, for longer yes. amount of time and do the same shit over and over again. And I didn't even really max out a level fifty. I got I got Hulk to level fifty and a. But I didn't bother carrying on to get his legendaries and all that stuff. Once I got him to level 50, I was like, I'm not playing this anymore. <laughs> uh, you know what? This actually seems a little bit like, oh, people are reaching the end too quickly. Let's slow them down artificially because that will keep them playing it. Mm. Like... They have, they are releasing or have released a, a Series X and PS5 update for it. And they have said that they will re-allow people to track through the story again, which currently you can't do. Once you've played the story once, that's it. Jesus. <laughs> without, dele- without deleting your save game. Um, once they allow to go back through the story again, for whatever reason they didn't put that in the fucking first place, dozy cunts, uh, <laughs> then I will probably play the story through again on the new console. But I certainly don't think I'll be playing through the grind again ever i mean i can understand from one point of view not allowing people to play through the story again without deleting a save that's a staple for a lot of games unless they've got some kind of chapter select Mm. that you just oh run through the game again but to put it on a game that has like next to no content that's post game anyway yeah (laughs) well you know it also depends how they've done the update in terms of um allowing you to bring your save game over from ps4 because if it's if it means i have to log into the ps4 to do it i no longer have one so i'll be starting from scratch just to play the story and then it will definitely get dropped at the end you'd like to think that they've got it set up so that their your character is saved on their end somewhere well you'd think so in an all a live service game but that you just don't know and i'm not i've not plugged it in to try and see if it works i'll I'll, I'll plug it in at some point in the next two weeks and I'll update you on that one. Okay. So, well, out of interest, yeah. I thought I'm going to go see if uh, you know it's still expensive to buy the Avengers video game. Game is still selling it for £55. Well, I'm better, guessing they've just got one copy left then. Better still, <laughs> I didn't realise this, for £59.99 I can pre-order the PS5 version which comes out next Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> so it ain't going free to play for a while because they're going to want to at least sell three of those. Yeah, yeah, it's um, it's not for me. I I was absolutely on the hype train until we went to EGX and I saw it at EGX and I immediately fell off the hype train. So I didn't even play it. I didn't dislike it to EGX, and it looked well, good from looking it, at it. And yeah, honestly, when I played it, it was it was great. It was definitely on the on the day one purchase up until I think it was a combination of that plus then the uh, slow announcements that they were partnering up with Sony for stupid little tiny things that then eventually turned into pretty big things and then for some reason going yeah we're gonna have Spider Man on uh, in in the game is Spider Man even in the game yet? Isn't he in the PlayStation version? Nope, 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 nope. He's still not in it. So Kate Bishop, who oh, is the worst Hawkeye and that no one really gives a fuck about, oh, exactly. was brought in. I was literally, I was reading this going, now also includes the following additional free content containing new characters, story content and more. Taking Aim, featuring Kate Bishop. 
Yeah, so Kate the Bishop fuck is, is basically Kate Hawkeye. <laughs> And you'll never guess who the second character they're releasing is. Oh, it's Clint Barton, the original Hawkeye. Hawkeye. So they've released a Hawkeye, and then they're releasing another Hawkeye. No, don't don't worry about changing it up a bit, guys. Well done, Crystal. You bunch <laughs> of just, fucking Hawkeye. Let's just Hawkeye. have another person with slightly altered. <laughs> ridiculous, fucking ridiculous. Right. Who thought? Yeah. Oh yeah, let's just release both the Hawkeyes first. Let's not worry about the myriad. And thousands of different potential Avengers characters we could release. Let's release two fucking Hawkeyes in a go. It's absolutely bonkers. Isn't um, the the Kate Bishop uh, Hawkeye because it's to like half tie themselves in with what's going to be the uh, Hawkeye TV show? I don't know. The Kate Bishop thing on here, I didn't play it for very long. It's some time travel shit because the normal Hawkeye is pissed off somewhere in time. And then you're picking up the Clint Barton. I presume the Clint Barton piece is because story-wise it follows on from Kate Bishop. That's the, the only potential I can see. Haven't they specifically come out and said this has got nothing to do with the MCU, the Marvel yeah, the television that. universe? Yeah. I None think, of that. No, I, uh, my, my aim was more that it was uh, not a tie-in, uh, jumping on the bandwagon like the whole game has been. Uh, jumping on the bandwagon of the popularity that is the Avengers. Uh, because, yeah, yeah, Kate Bishop is the protagonist of the Hawkeye TV show that's coming out on Disney+. Plus. Mm, I don't think that would be anything to do with this. I think it's just because they released with a patch of story. I think this is why they're releasing in this order. Which makes me wonder, because they already said that Spider-Man's story won't tie in, or maybe it will now, but they could have just released that at any point. I don't know. All seems a bit fucking backwards to me. It seems like they announced Spider-Man uh, and then thought, oh, fuck, we actually need to do some stuff relating to Spider-Man. Because they kind of just went with, yeah, we'll announce, we'll just mention that we've got Spider-Man because yeah. who the fuck doesn't have Spider-Man? Whatever. I don't have Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> and nor does anybody else yet. <laughs> uh, no, but you'd love to have Spider-Man because then you're That's why I bought it on the PlayStation. You know, that's the only reason I bought it on the PlayStation. Otherwise, right. I'd have picked it up on the Xbox. If it ever goes free to play, um, we can play on Xbox together because by then they'll probably have uh, cross save enabled as well. Yeah, I don't think they're going to be putting too much more work into this game, in my honest. I don't think they're going to be earning fortunes from it. I, but, feel, yeah. I feel like this it's, game was supposed to be like essentially a Destiny killer, and it's gone the same way as all the other fucking Destiny killers. Yeah, I can confirm that your save does carry over with no issue because I've just loaded it up and it's got all my characters and their cost, their current costumes. Well, I suppose you are playing the PlayStation 4 version, aren't you? Because the Yeah, but I'd have obviously versions the, not I didn't know if yet. the save would carry over. Well, with a bit of luck, um, this version will now work <laughs> and when you load up the PlayStation 5 download, if it's even a free download for you, yeah, it's, it's not yeah. like a five pound top up uh i think it's then then you'll still get the playstation 5 graphics of this version and still have your save all right um moving on swiftly um aliens fire team in the summer i don't i don't it's it looks fun and is just on the right side of terrifying um it's it's an action game with Hints yeah. to survival horror as opposed to being a survival, a survival horror, horror with hints of action. It's a co-op shooter set in the Aliens universe. Yes. Um, lads, what of? What are we doing? I'm buying it day one. Buying it day one, Lee? Oh, I'm not buying it day one because Colonial Marines. <laughs> oh, God. But, but Alien Isolation didn't play it. Of course yeah, it's far too scary. Too scary. I would kill to just watch you play Alien Isolation just for half an hour. What would you kill? Anything. Except you, because I want to watch you play Alien. I will kill you afterwards, if that's what you so desire. <laughs> oh, I'm sold. Let me do it. <laughs> uh, right. I mean, personally, I only have one issue. Um, and that it's that there's just there's so many Xenomorphs. Like, it's, it's not, it's not 
fear on top of more fear. No, it's not. It, um, that's, that's what makes it an action game. That, uh, but it's like it's like playing Left for Dead. Like the the horde wasn't scary, but then because overall it made that so the specials weren't even that scary. Uh, I feel like I could probably take on a Xenomorph regardless of which one it is that's coming after me because I watched the trailer again today and there's quite a few different types. Like, there's the standard, like, ones that are just running around and you just set them on fire. And then there was definitely what looked like the original. Yeah. And then a couple of, like, big Hulk and tanky ones. So that was pretty cool. Yes. I wonder if they've brought a load of... Do you, I don't know, you guys might remember probably Brooker more than John because of your age. But do you remember the original figures that came out for Aliens? Oh. And there were some really dope ones, like the Praying Mantis Alien and stuff yeah. like that. It was, like, luminous green. Yeah. And like the Queen and Ajax, who used to wear like an alien suit and all that sort of shit. I'm hoping that they've just gone fucking mental and done a load of stuff like well, that. Do you, I, I I think about these toys a lot, and it, for no other reason than you go, do you, you look at the the stuff. Maybe you do the same because you've got a kid as well. But you still watch shitty kids TV, and the amount of fucking toys that are advertised on kids TV is just, it makes my ears bleed. But I'm like, all of these are really nice and friendly when i was six i was begging my mum to buy me alien toys these are things i shouldn't be watching i shouldn't know what they are that yet they're in the kids section of the argos catalog the fuck was going on with 20th century fox man (laughs) yeah i mean it's it's the staple of i mean even when i was growing up because i'm a lot younger than you guys are uh but like robocop was a huge thing for kids in terms of toys robocop is not a kid's film not even a little bit <laughs> and yet somehow robocop toys were a thing um oh, i can't nikita's gonna love that what robocop kids film that not just a film um but yeah seriously things like so many toys for movie tie-ins for films that kids should not be watching in the slightest. It's brilliant. Uh, and then, uh, and then, like, and now we've got uh, kids' toys, which are probably more dangerous because of choking hazards. No. Uh, but we they have, look we have like Fortnite branded Nerf guns now. Really? Yeah, man. That's and Halo. And Halo branded ones. I know ones. the Halo ones existed. I wasn't aware there was Fortnite ones, and yeah. I'm actually sad. Fortnite had been around longer than the Halo ones, to be yeah. fair. I bought my nephew a couple in the past. Um, I'm trying to... There was there was a set of Nerf guns. I can't remember what they were. They were branded for something, but I can't remember what they were. It wasn't Fortnite. Whatever. It was, it was a tie-in to something, possibly a TV show or a film. Yeah, I, I think anyway. Aliens Fire Team. I think the more I look at it, the more I look and go, "This is World War Z with aliens." Yeah, or Left 4 Dead with aliens, or, or however you know, whichever comparison you want to make to to co-op horde mode shooters. That's what this is. Is it? I can't remember. Is it four player with five characters or three player with four characters? Uh, it's five character classes. I don't know how yeah. many players it is. I think it's four player with five classes. Then, cool. Uh, so yeah, we need to find a fourth that's not Phil. Yes, that's a good point. <laughs> after after playing World War Z with Phil, can we not have Phil? But I mean, legit. What's I've... the opposite of Phil? What's the opposite of Phil? <laughs> I mean, I would, I'm I'm quite excited for it. I it depends. I mean, it depends on price because it's a. It's a co-op shooter, which means playing it on my own will probably be a bit boring. I'd probably only play it with you guys, so I'm not likely to lay down 50 quid to do that. Yeah, if it if it throws down at, like, say, the top end of 30, yeah, then it's certainly on my radar, but only because it's a new game to play. I mean, I'll quite uh, happily throw down full price for it at some point. But, I'm, but I'm I, happy it's to... one of those games that I certainly will not be buying out of the bag just because you know that there's going to be a lot of issues with it and I'd rather play something that's a little bit closer to being alright because we'll buy it digitally for you <laughs> well but yeah. the, this is the thing yeah, I, we'll split, but... I don't mind spending money on games but the the problem is I, I'm not fussed about it being uh, no I lie I am fussed about it possibly being broken 
you know, I've been pissed off enough this year with broken fucking games on release date. But I'm, for me, I have to be able to justify, some, most of the time, I have to be able to justify the cost. And if it's going to be 55, 60 quid, I, for a game that I literally, I will exclusively play with my mates, of which I have maybe five that play video games. Two of them are you, you know. <laughs> Uh, will I get my money's worth out of it or do I wait for it to fix itself wait for service to balance and wait for a sale and pick it up 30 quid 30 quid works for me I'm quite happy so, with that But I'm just thinking it's a shame that A it's probably not going to have cross play on launch B uh, Paddy doesn't have an Xbox to my knowledge and Paddy. C I don't have a Playstation uh, Paddy has the Series X. Ah, interesting. Because then we've got four people to play it whenever he wants to play, it would, like on stream. <laughs> it would it would be right up Paddy's uh, up Paddy's alley as well. Exactly. I was just trying to. I'm just trying to think. Paddy's like, alley. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been there. It's nice. Uh, but I am all for getting hold of this game as and whenever we decide to get it, and then like devoting like every Friday for the rest of like the time year <laughs> just just to, just to play a game that is essentially left for dead 4.0 yeah because this is now the near fifth game that is in the same vein as, <laughs> see you say that as... i i like left for dead i didn't have the greatest time with it when we were even when we were playing together it was okay world war z i adored when we played that I liked World War Z enough that I carried on playing it I after you did. guys stopped and I actually really enjoyed playing it, finished all the campaigns and even got the DLC campaign <laughs> and actually got my level up quite high for overall. So, yeah, this I've got nothing against playing and getting this game and uh, I don't know what the new Left 4 Dead spiritual sequel is going to be. I can't remember what it's called. Back for Blood. Back for Blood. Well, I don't even know when that's coming out, but that's quite kind soon, of... isn't it? That's like, isn't it like March or something that's due out? Oh, God, if it is, that's brilliant, because I need to get it. Or March, maybe not March, maybe like May. June, comes out 18th of June. So, then, uh, 22nd of June. Made by... Who is Turtle Rock? Um, aren't they the guys, they the guys that, that, made... that formed themselves? Did it make they Evolve? Were... They, were, they were Valve South. They're, they're not and the they're, guys that made Evolve, though, are they? No, they're the guys that made the first Left 4 Dead game. Oh, okay. oh no, they did make Evolve. Actually. They did. Oh, the fuck that! I'm not playing Back for Blood then. But yeah, <laughs> they made fuck the first that. Left 4 Dead. They made Evolve, and they've also got ties to Counter Strike, as does every fucking. Um, Anyone Valve who's ever worked for Valve has got ties to Counter Strike. Uh. I am excited for Back for Blood, but I didn't realise it was being made by the guys that made Evolve, and Evolve I I had issues with. Evolve's issues are the same as every other game that is uh, asymmetric, that you can't get people to play it for a long period of time because everyone fucking hates asymmetric games. Like, there's a weird fundamental thing about asymmetrics where you just... You, something can stick in the back of your mind where it's like, this would be more fun if I was able to banter the person who is on the other side. Yeah. But then you can't play competitively like that, which then means that you're now only playing it for the joy of playing it, where you yeah. need to have enough people to play with at all times instead of being, oh, I'm on my own, so I'll play it as the solo. Yeah. Or a I've got three Asymmetric people games play. need a hook, and they need... A at the moment, if you want to be an asymmetric game, if you're not Dead by Daylight, you're you're not getting anywhere. Dead by Daylight is so big at the moment. Dead by Daylight has made an absolute killing based entirely on the fact that it's managed to license itself really well, slowly, to start with, where it was picking up its licenses and yep. also picking up a couple of half licenses where it was going, well, we can get away with doing this because we've not said this. And it's worked. Oh, they do that. Apart from uh, specific stuff like the Silent Hill uh, expansion, apart from specific yeah. ones like that, they're all like that. All of yeah. them. 
Yeah, and then there's um, the Stranger Things expansion, which that was quite amusing, and the Saw expansion was. Uh, I um I was there's a guy that I watch on Twitch occasionally, plays nothing but Dead by Daylight. Um, just because it's quite fun to watch people playing it. Yeah. Um, and he was doing a stream not that long ago where he was playing with essentially other people's builds. Yeah. So because obviously he's on PlayStation, so he can just load up to other people's games. Yeah. And was basically playing their builds, but he was flipping around, so it was like playing as like the the solo killer versus, and then also playing as the one of the many. Yeah. In uh, and he was like really he was playing around and enjoying himself, and basically winning more often mm-hmm. than not because he's actually really good at the fucking game. Uh, but at the same time, maybe it was I was watching and thinking, you know what, I'd really like to get into playing it, but at the same time. I've played it before, um, albeit I was playing with people who weren't really interested in it. They were just doing it for the challenge in the Microsoft Rewards, which one of them didn't get completed because it was too fucking hard. Because when you are when you try and play a game like that, specifically to do a challenge, where you've never played it before, and you're playing against people who've been playing it for God knows how fucking long, yep. you're going to have a bad time. Yeah. I have a lot of time for Dead by Daylight, and I've said it before. If you guys ever want to play it, I'm, I'm not good, but I I know it a little bit, so I can talk you guys through it, and we can get up and we can play. And if you can find a fourth, you literally we just go in as as a team of survivors, and we'll get matched up with a guy who wants to play killer. Yeah, it works really well like that. I kind of want to get into playing it, but uh, because of no one else wants to fucking play it it becomes, oh, I need to learn how to be a killer. And then I start looking through the killers, and it's like, oh, these are all really cool. Cost a fortune, mind. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just just to get more than just the standard ones. They've always got sales on, though. Always. Yeah, when but I, I have, bought... always having a sale on, and then only spending um, three pounds just to get a uh, ghost face. Yeah, so I, I bought the... I don't know what it was called, Ultimate Survivor Edition or something... Because I missed it when it was on PlayStation Plus, and I needed to grab it on PlayStation. So this is before it had crossplay. So I bought like, the Ultimate Survivor Edition, or whatever it was called, and it cost me like twenty-eight quid. Uh, and it came with the Stranger Things uh, expansion, or expansion, the Stranger Things uh, level, the and a couple of others, but I don't know, I don't remember. But it just so happened I was I was, I was talking to the people I was going to be playing with that weekend, and uh, Sam went. She was like, "They got a sale on. Go have a look. See what you got." I was like, "Ooh." We have a sale. So the like, next thing I know, I, I bought like the uh, the Ash vs. Evil Dead one. I bought the Saw one. I bought the Ghostface one. I, I bought the Silent Hill one. I'm like, okay. Ghostface Killer. Yeah, Ghostface Killer. Yeah, uh, <laughs> the, the horror game that has a really, really shitty Wu-Tang Clan rapper in it. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it was such a laugh. But I was like, this game cost me 30 quid and now suddenly it just cost me 60 because I bought all this fucking DLC. I, I do keep an eye on because occasionally it's... I don't know whether it's Twitch Prime or if it's part of the Game Pass Ultimate Benefits Reward, whatever the fuck, program, or both. They do occasionally put stuff on them that is, oh, this for Dead by Daylight unlock. So I think there was one. I think it might have been a Stranger Things one this time round. Mm. But I am kind of, I do keep an eye on it, the same as I keep an eye on the stuff. Well, I used to keep an eye on the stuff for Destiny specifically because I was like, yeah, I'll pick it up and then next time I load up, I'll just grab it from Holiday and then. But that's yeah, less I mean, of I, an issue I'm, now. I'm on Twitch quite a bit, so I usually, I you know, once every couple of weeks, I go on and check the new loot and just assign it to whatever account. Like at some point, I'll log into Rocket League and get a shitload of new cars and skins and things, and I'll go, oh yeah, I got that, didn't I? And I'll never I'm use them. I'm scared for the next time that I fire up World of Tanks, because it's now been like five <laughs> years of me collecting Twitch Prime benefits without playing World of Tanks. The one for me is whenever I say, goes, here, have a free million dollars for GTA Online, I'm like, great, I don't play GTA Online. Should I uh, play GTA Online? And it takes me about 20 minutes to convince myself that no, I don't need to buy yet another copy of GTA V just to hate it and eBay it two hours later. So the one with GTA Online is actually you're actually really lucky with because if you don't 
sign in and collect it, it disappears. Excellent. So it's it's a million, but you have to sign in once a week for a month. Yeah. To get that million, and it's every week. Someone I work with, uh, specifically, whenever those million dollar things come up, he specifically goes in, gets his million dollars, boots up GTA Five, and then goes and spends it all in a strip club. And then logs out, he's done again until the next time he can get three million dollars. Right. Okay, that's weird. It is very weird, and I'm like, Cause you might want to have a word with your wife, you know, maybe actually, you know, do go to husband. a real strip club. Oh, don't go to a real strip club, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, these guys have got kids. I, I know that they're getting busy, <laughs> but he seems really hard up. <laughs> well, no. His wife has kids. Well, yeah. <laughs> That's the only thing that they've and got to do. And a turkey baster. <laughs> and a turkey baster. Well, I don't breathe. No. That's grim, yeah. man. Um, it, in all seriousness, that, yeah, that, that GTA one is you get 200000 a week for four weeks. Uh, and then on if you sign in on the fourth week, having done all of the previous ones, then you only then do you get the remaining 200000 to make it a cool million. Wow. So yeah, it's um how very it's Pavlovian a million, of them. But but targeted million. So yeah. Yeah, fuck um, that. that was a that was a fun segue out of Aliens Fire Team. It was. So, uh, in order to spare you all from hearing about Hitman again, Destiny Two again and Hades again. Uh, we're having a bit of a, a feature episode this time round, and we're going to list our top three. Wait, don't ish don't say that games. Yeah, because I'm still going to talk about. <laughs> oh, well, that, well, <laughs> talk about no, you know, Hitman. cancel this bit, right? We're going to talk. Well, a, a list well no, I was going to say, please don't say we're not going to talk about Hades back. anymore because I've got Hades on order and it'll be here next week. I want to talk about it next episode. <laughs> okay, you're allowed to talk about Hades. Leave not <laughs> ever. Again. Sorry, continue. So, but let's face it, sometimes gaming is hard, but like not just the difficulty you set, but it's it's about the time that you have to devote into it. And like you have to beg, borrow and steal afternoons, evenings, just like sending your wife off to bed slightly early so that you can go and complete a couple of missions on whatever big game it is you have to be playing. That's right. Or you're just kind of happy that you've got access to the TV because she's gone out to watch a film or something so you can then throw on the whatever launch title it was that's just come out. Yeah. Or, or you, you just happen to be playing an Ubisoft game and it <laughs> takes you 6,000 years to finish it. <laughs> you just sometimes... happen to be playing a Ubisoft game it takes you 6,000 years to get to the title screen. Yeah. <laughs> And and sometimes it does take you a lot of time to round up a group of friends to play things like Among Us. True. Um, uh, or you just yes. need a, you you need a group of friends and you can get yourself a good game session playing Call of Duty for the evening, or a couple of games of FIFA in my case, or just wanting to play Rocket League. Sometimes you just don't have the ability to just throw a text out and go. Does anyone want to play something? Sometimes you need to make these plans well in advance. But this feature is not about those times this is about those lovely times when you realize oh fuck i've got like an hour to kill right now i've got time i can just like jump on something those those few and far between existences of bliss where you can throw on those comfy slippers you can play the game you know like the back of your fucking hand because it doesn't require a lot of time to get into those shit so lads we have that sounded games. scripted. But I wrote down that entire thing. I I I didn't even read it verbatim either. I I went off cuff a couple of times. I'll be honest. Well, uh, bravo! Yeah, don't yeah. well done, man. I'm impressed. Uh, that was me writing that. Well, between the time of you sending the email and me reading it, <laughs> I sent the email two hours ago. I know. Um, like I I. I put effort into this episode, I will be honest. It's the first time I've done it in a while, I thought, fuck it, I need to do it. <laughs> I, put, I put so little effort into this episode, I typed out an email for it and didn't send it until this evening. <laughs> it's a 
about time that I took the reins and actually put some effort in. Uh, especially seeing as I've not played any fucking games in ages. Well, so this this is this is kind of the point, though, isn't it? So we yeah. we were all talking yesterday about what games we've been playing. We're all like, well, we've only played the same shit we've been playing for the last month. Yeah, Mate, it's the second week of fucking March. Nothing's happened. Let's not talk about these games again. Let's let's let's, let's do let's talk about something else. And it 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 seems like a really cool. Uh, Wait, considering we're all playing games that we are just quite happy to just pick up and play because there's nothing new out or there's nothing really that interests us and we've got time to play games. So why not just sit and chill out with a, a game that you're just so happy and comfortable to just sit and play? You know, yep. uh, And that's kind of the point. So to, to talk about the other games that you can do that with. Uh, what are your favourites? Yeah. What, what are your your best games that you know more than any other fucking game that you've played. You can just sit and enjoy and love. And to be fair, listeners, right, come back to us and actually, you know what, send us a tweet. What do you think of your games that you can just play? You don't have to put that effort into. Right. Brooker, you're number one. Go. Well, number th- whatever. Okay, well, I'll tell you what. order them in any kind of way. So, so briefly, I, ca- I, I said when we said we were going to do this, I I restricted myself. I didn't want to say things like Hitman because, frankly, it's a fucking cop out. Uh, <laughs> but I thought well, actually what I would do is I because there, there's a lot of games. Hitman tends to be my game that I go to now. So what I want to do is that like, instead my ones are going to be ones that in the past perhaps I've have had that effect on me. And what I mean is. Older game. I mean, if I still had the opportunity to play them, I probably would, but I don't, so I don't bother. So I'll go. So my number three, at you know, completely out of left field, Battlefield Three. Oh God, yeah. Battlefield Three was the tits. I clocked four five hundred hours playing Battlefield Three multiplayer just because I could. I had time to play. And you know, oh, but, you know, I think we were, I was still living in the flat when Battlefield Three came out, and I remember sitting, you know, Maya's cooking as you go. Oh, you got fifteen minutes or dinner's ready? Fifteen minutes? Fuck yeah, I can get a multiplayer game in here. Shit, yeah, son. Boot up the PS3. <laughs> you know, quick game of of a of, uh, of Battlefield Three on on multiplayer. Absolutely brilliant, and. It was a game for you. You didn't get the the best gaming experience when you did it like that because um, other people were different. But for me, I need to I need a couple of games to feel my way into it and just kind of get into a rhythm. But when you play it like that, it's just so much fun. And this is before uh, rentable servers were EA's new money making scheme, where people could buy servers to create their own games. And as much as playing unlimited ticket four hour games of Metro. It sounded like a good idea. An hour and a half into the same match, man, I was so fucking bored. Yeah, so, it was, so, especially when it was the same match and yeah. nothing had happened. Nothing had changed. Exactly. Everyone had... One team had flag A, one team had flag C. But between you, you were fighting over flag B and neither of you were really getting anywhere. Yeah. So, in in the spirit of that, so Battlefield 3 and... Just as much, it was a tie for these two. Battlefield Three and Bad Company Two would yeah. would gladly, if if the servers were still up and they were populated, I would gladly install them today and just jump on and play for a little while. So much fun. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll allow those. I mean, I um to keep in the same vein of Battlefield, I recently played Battlefield Four and it just it's not worth playing Battlefield Four. I, I I actually played it on my Series X actually not that long ago and it was absolute gash yeah. because it's just not very well optimized and graphically speaking it's fucking trash um, and there's only like thirty servers available all of them only have like three maps uh, uh, Gorham and Railway I think it's called or something similar to that um, and I did the same with uh, Battlefield One because that was last week's um weekly objective on the xbox was to 
finish in the top squad. Yeah, I saw uh, that. And it's almost exclusively a team death match on small maps. Yeah, so Battlefield... But I was on a Brazilian server at the time. I believe it was Battlefield 4, so it might have been... No, it was, it was pretty sure it was 4. Uh, they had a CQB DLC pack come out, which turned Battlefield into Call of Duty. It was all tight. I Battlefield 3 had one. It was Battlefield 3, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, I actually, I, I really that. enjoyed them. Those were really good maps. Uh, but it turned Battlefield into Call of Duty. So it went from the big sprawling open maps to these really these super tight maps. But uh, you you wouldn't last more than a few seconds on each map just because you know, there were 64 people on these tiny little maps. It was fucking mental. Uh, but after they got quite popular, Battlefield continued down that route and I didn't like it. Yeah, it was definitely the end of Battlefield when they started to realise that people were really happy with jumping into small-scale maps. Yeah. Because it meant that even the big maps, if you there was open bits, but then it was mostly, oh, if you really want to actually do the action, you have to go into this really close quarter section and no one actually does like it. Yeah. It's like, if you're out in the, out in the open, you get killed by a tank. So you have to go sit in the middle and then you get killed by a shotgun. Yeah. Also, Battlefield Hardline was awesome. Everyone else hates it. I fucking loved Battlefield Hardline multiplayer. (laughs) Even the the campaign for Hardline was spectacular. Uh, The campaign for Hardline was just a a copper story, though, wasn't it? It it wasn't Battlefield at all. I did enjoy it, though. But yeah, Yeah. Battlefield 3 is mine. My first entry. Cool. Mr. Lee, your first entry? Um... So I didn't go in that same vein as Brooker. I mean, there's there's a myriad of games that I used to play uh, in the multiplayer spectrum um, when I had more time and I did enjoy playing them at the time, but they weren't kind of pick up and play. That was just what I played at the time. So, I've, you know, Halo 3, Halo Reach, Destiny. Uh, but I've not gone down that route. What I went with was games that I don't feel the need to complete anything on or do a challenge on or you know something that I just was happy to pick up and just play it irrespective of achievements or unlockables or anything like that so um, I struggled to get three if I'm honest (laughs) there's only really one contender that I would always just pick up and just play it uh, there are two others, which I do thoroughly enjoy, um, and I do pick up and play them, but it's not quite as, you know, not the, my first on the list is the most prevalent of the three. Uh, so I'll start with my third, and that's Transistor by Supergiant Games. Now, I'm happy to just pick up and play that whenever and go through and continue, even on New Game Plus, just continue building and continue trying new things and and... and so on and so forth, but it's not something they go back to all the time, mostly because I've just got so much to plough through. Uh, but yeah, Transistor, there you go. Julia. Nice. Um, so uh, I'm... Okay, so maybe it's not so much just like that game where you've got a bit of time to kill. Uh, so I'm going to throw out my first one, which is the Football Manager. Um, but it's not just like the any particular one it's whichever one i happen to be able to play um like as an example though uh, i was playing it for like the hour between me finishing writing that speech to us talking right now Uh, i was playing football manager so it does a little fall into the category of just having a bit of time i can jump on um, but with the latest going on to Game Pass in it last week, uh, and the fact that I've already finished my first season on the game, just in here and there bits of time, like playing it like in the background while also watching um, keynotes from uh, stuff at work. Uh, but football, like football Manager, it's a staple for me. It's it's been something that I've been playing for near 15 years in some capacity or another that I'm just happy to buy a copy and then have that for a good couple of years and then buy whichever one happens to come out next 
um, because there's no point buying each one because the change from one to the next is usually minuscule. The difference between 20 and 21 is actually one of the largest I've seen in a while. So I was kind of miffed when I first started playing it from it being on Game Pass because it was a it would have been a decent purchase. But to counter that, is that I'll probably end up buying 22 when it comes around in October time. So I, I tend to skip a year or two before buying the next one. I don't need to buy each one. Um, and once you've got past the first like couple of tutorials from the new content, it's it's, well, it's it's pretty much a standard. There isn't really huge differences on how to play the game. It's just finding your way through it, and then eventually just sticking with what you know and just carrying on. As and just it's a time sink. And when when you've got a spare hour, that's kind of what you want. Is a bit of a time sink. So that's a. Uh, that's my one of my games that I've got. Um, Brooks, any more? Next. Oh, I've got plenty. Uh, <clears throat> so, how about uh, just in general? Actually, no, I'll save this one for last. So, uh, let's go for Dishonored. Any Dishonored game, any of the three. I have them all installed. I can pick them up, play them. A bit like Lee with Transistor. I can just... Especially... When when your game's like a hub world, you can I can pick that game up now, and suddenly I'm I'm five missions in, and I can just I'll start the mission, just dick around for an hour, finish the mission and go back, and then be done. I love it, and it's I I know the game so well now that I can basically parkour my way around the entire map. And just have fun doing it. Uh, and I know with Dishonored, there's, like, there's only like a finite amount of things to do, but there's more things to do in a Dishonored game than there are in most games that size. Because it's just there's there's shit to read. There's there's shit to if you you can just stop and listen to a conversation and it's brilliant. I mean, Hitman has the same thing. You can just all the NPCs have random conversations that they can have, and they're so they're so interesting to listen to, but. Dishonored, I I find it's a world that I really enjoy spending time in. So, to just pick it up and and dick around in the the dusty district for an hour, I'm all good with that. And it's a perfect way to waste an hour. I absolutely love Dishonored, and I I would continue playing it over and over and over again. Long after any achievements, trophies and challenges are completed, I'll keep playing it because it's just so much fun. But yeah, that's half of the battle. <laughs> in, uh, in any game, is uh, just the way it makes you feel, the way that you can just throw yourself back at it because you just you want to immerse yourself in it. And I, it's not for me because well, I've I've played Dishonored and did not really enjoy playing it. So, I had a feeling you'd pick Dishonored. I played yeah. it the other day. I played two for a bit the other day. Uh, I didn't carry on for long. It was a quest thing, but I it did. I thought, oh, if I play this for much longer, I'm going to get addicted again. So it, it went off. It is a series. At some point, I will sit and redo the whole the the saga from start to end, uh, just because I can. And I might I might do it on PlayStation because once I came away from. PlayStation 3, all of my Dishonored stuff on The Last Gem was on Xbox, so I quite happily you know, when it's on sale, digitally pick up the trilogy and, and play through again. But yeah, I'd like, I'd like to play through the story again just for shits and giggles, but it is a game that you can just pick up and just play for a little while. But like you say, they're much longer than that and you'll go, yeah, I'm not putting this down now. Mm. I'll, I'll be phoning in sick to work tomorrow, don't I? I'll do Dishonored. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mr. Lee, carry on. Um, so, it's a new game-ish. So I've not really had much of a, just have a quick play on this, with it yet, but I know that it is that game type to me, um, is Hades. Unsurprisingly, 
because it never gets boring. Even when I, I've exhausted, I, I'm 99% sure I've exhausted every possible um, additional conversation that I can at the point in my, the game that I'm at. I don't know whether I missed some coming through that are no longer accessible, but I'm almost sure I've exhausted all the conversations now. But that doesn't stop the game from being fucking amazing. So that is going to be the next one that I play on the Switch. After I, well, to be fair, with my next game, I've actually moved over to the Xbox. And so my Switch version doesn't get touched now. Um, Switch is brilliant for pick up and play because of the power on power off anywhere at any point and it doesn't affect any game or they're all the same uh, none of them crash just because they've got quick resume <laughs> so yeah so Hades at the moment is uh, second slot yeah I mean I am the the amount that you've talked about Hades has made Brooker go and ahead and try and get hold of a copy of the game well, to be fair I um, think Paddy's convinced him, I bet. <laughs> no, uh, to be fair, I was convinced to buy Hades. I was just, I have a 50 50 relationship with how I like their games at the moment. So I wasn't willing to fork out 25 quid for a digital game to play it. However, I am willing to fork out 25 quid for a physical game, which if I hate, I can sell. Yep. Uh, and I'll be honest. The amount that love that Lee has spewed all over his Switch for it, uh, I am tempted to pick it up because it is on Steam. Um, I, if if I see it in a sale or a humble bundle or something where I can get it below its full price, because I don't think I've seen it do that ever. It's been twenty um, percent off on Steam pretty much since its release. Yeah, but that's still too much money. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I, I will probably end up with it, uh, but un- until I see it at a price point that I'm comfortable paying, it's it's probably not going to be one I'm going to buy until then. But I do want to play it. Yeah, I mean, for me, I I trust Lee's opinion on most things. So it's even game, <laughs> game wise, an, game wise anyway, <laughs> which is why I said most. Uh. But no, the, the thing with Hades always interested me, and 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 Lee going on about it, banging on about it like a broken fucking record. Fucking uh, Lee, <clears throat> Hitman. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, uh, I've got a really awkward cough. <laughs> but yeah, convince me that I would, you know, it, it should, I should give it a go. And I, I never, at no point did I say I'm not interested or I'm not going to give it a go. What I said was I need to be able to buy it at a price that's comfortable for me. Uh, which I have done. Because again, if I don't like it, I can sell it. You know, I don't mind losing a couple of quid if I can sell it on. <clears throat> John. Okay. <laughs> sell it on to John. Yeah. Who hasn't got a Switch. Yeah. Oh yeah, much. that's a good... You know, I don't know. No. Um... When when the Switch Pro comes out later this year, I might consider picking another one up. Yeah, because uh, that, that's definitely what we all need. A tiny little handheld thing that's trying to up all its games to 4K. The battery will definitely last a long time in that. I think it'll be, like, restricted to, I think, 720, whatever the current default is for the screen that's on it. It'll be when it's docked that it goes up to probably 1440p, to be fair. Because, uh... That's that's a lot easier than going to 4K, especially with uh, with what's going to be the size of the games. Yeah, I mean at that point it doesn't interest me if it's docked. I'm not playing it. Yeah, I mean I'm more interested in it docked, connected up to a monitor, and playing uh, as at home. Um, yeah, the whole being able to portableize it it's quite useful, but I don't have the same sort of situation that you do where I could have to where I'm sat in the living room uh, and if I want to play games it's either have to be the only one there or it has to be handheld well, no I mean so. as a rule I don't 
I, I only really play my Switch in the house if I specifically want to play my Switch or that like, football's on and I want to watch football and play games at the same time. Yeah. I've got Especially two, when there's a really shit football game on. But I've got two you know, proper console proper consoles is mean spirited, that's not what I mean. But I have two four K consoles attached to my T V. If I'm gonna play games on something that's attached to my T V, it's gonna be on one of them. Yeah. Completely understandable. Uh, I think that's why the Switch kind of died when I first got one, because as much as I loved playing it, the games that I had did not really suit playing handheld. Smash Brothers definitely does not suit handheld game. No. Um, and the, if it was connect, connected up to the TV, the odds of me playing it was pretty slim. So it's the same as uh, if I was to get hold of a, uh, a PlayStation again. It's like so it's all well and good having one, but it's connected up to the same thing that my Xbox is. Or worse than that, when I got my I had my uh, uh, first PlayStation Four, it was connected up to the TV in a completely different room to where my Xbox was. So I only ever played it when I was the only person in the flat at the time, which meant that I then spent as much time updating it as I did playing it. So, yeah. Um, What's your number two then, mate? But, so my number two. Um, it's a bit of a cheat because it's technically three games. And not one. Don't fucking um, say Mass Effect. Okay, I will not say <laughs> Mass Effect. Only it's it's definitely Mass Effect. I mean, I, to be honest, I was going to pick The Witcher Three because I have found myself just picking up and playing for a like going through, do a quest, couple of quests, a little bit of map cleanup while going through my second playthrough, which is taking a lot longer than it really well any playthrough should really take on any game. Um, so. Yeah, but I, I, I've picked Mass Effect, um, but only because but it's really easy for me to just jump on and play it. I mean, once I've, once I've probably finished the story, there isn't really much else to do, because normally when I play Mass Effect, I finish the story and pretty much all of the side quests. But with the impending arrival of the Legendary Edition... Um, there's, that's like 120 to 200 hours of my life that I need to beg, borrow and steal and find time for. So if I've got a spare hour sitting around somewhere, then absolutely I'm going to be fucking playing it because an hour is enough time usually to finish a mission or a mission and a half or do a bit of map cleanup or clear out a couple of uh, side quests or do some running around the Citadel. Um, and uh, a quick apology to Lee for mocking him about being excited for the Legendary Edition earlier. <laughs> Have you suddenly found yourself excited for it? E- almost. Uh, I mean, yeah, uh, it's kind of the same. I don't, you know, I don't get excited about it much nowadays. But I, I'm not pre-ordering. I think that yet, I'm looking even... forward to playing it. I think would I, be the I'm, best thing. Yeah, I'm. I'm looking forward to sticking it on, firing it up, playing around. I, I don't know how whether or not I'm going to be throwing as much time into it as I have done for Mass Effect in the past. It depends entirely on how well built the game is. It's based entirely on what I've seen so far in videos. It looks beautiful, but there's also a hell of a lot of lens flare, uh, and and the brightness for it is is very upscaled 4K. <laughs> it's very very fake HDR in the worst possible way. But I am a little excited for playing it. When's it? I, uh, May 12th. I'm just looking forward to picking it up for 40 quid or less. Yeah, I mean... At I which at point, the... uh, yes, I'll I... either pre-order it or buy it. I have Game I like, Pass I like... slash EA Play. I will play it when it's free. I mean... I wonder if it will get the same ten hours of free gameplay that every uh, every game every uh, EA Play title gets. Because if it does, then uh, that, that's possible that that's enough time for me to make my shepherd. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I I'm I'm pretending that I'm not just going to use the default shepherd or the default femme shepherd. I haven't decided which. Because the um, when you create your own, he always looks a bit weird. Not they the do. Movie. They always just look like an NPC. Yeah. Versus, versus uh, 
I mean, to be, that was what uh, original FemShep looked like. Okay, I think that's actually an option, though, is that you can have original FemShep, or you, you can, can have uh, the yeah. created FemShep that they put in when they released Mass Effect 3. Because originally what? it was just going to be Mass Effect 3's FemShep that's put into 1 and 2. But people complained, saying that they wanted their FemShep to look like original FemShep or not. My not original re- FemShep was bold. As she probably should have been. Mm-hmm. She's in the military. Jane yep. Luke Picard. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So yeah, there's a Mass Effect. Is, Good call. Is, is on it. Uh, Brooks number three. Mortal Kombat. Ooh. No, I, I get that. Literally any Mortal Kombat. Whatever. Which is your favourite though? Oh, Genuinely, out of all of them. Nine. Mortal Kombat yeah. versus DC. I thought nine was one of the best. Nine Closely one. followed by uh, Ultimate. Yeah, I like Ultimate. I really like Ultimate. because it had like 6,000 characters on it. Oh, yeah. It's fucking <laughs> mental. Although, downloading it all on the fucking PlayStation, the amount of different... You know, yet the, the problem I found recently with the PlayStation is if you've got a version of a game that is, has a PS4 and PS5 version, if you want all the DLC and you have to go through and do them one at a time... You also have to select which version you want to download. All right. No, I mean the original Ultimate. Oh, original Ultimate. Ah, okay. Yeah. Was it Mortal Kombat Three Ultimate? Yeah, yeah. Just it was it was released as Mortal Kombat Ultimate, wasn't it? It had like fifty five characters or something stupid. But A thousand palette swaps. Mortal Kombat Nine, which was the the the, the Mortal Kombat revival, revival really, wasn't yeah. it? It was it was when X rays were a thing. It had a had a story a proper story mode. Although I, you know, I go back far enough to remember like the Sub Zero game story mode, which was fucking Hunt. terrible. Uh, but genuinely, like any Mortal Kombat game, I, I don't, I don't care if it's got a story mode or not. The story mode is fun, but pick up a game, especially the the newer ones. You know what? I've got half an hour. Let's do a challenge tower. You know. Just grab your favourite character and just do a challenge tower. And you, you can piss away half an hour, you know, before dinner. Or, oh God, I want to go to bed, but I want to play some games. Let's play for 45 minutes. Let's do a couple of challenge towers. Probably don't want to be taking it online if that's how you play Mortal Kombat, because you're not going to fucking get anywhere. No. Uh, but yeah, it's just... Literally, the, the nature game. of the game is to pick up and play. It's literally how it's built. It's built from an arcade machine. It's built to just pick up, stick your 10p in and play, or 50p or pound or whatever, and play. So it, to extend that into your living room, I think, is great. And it's it's a series that's had its ups and downs. It's had its Mortal Kombat 9s and 10s. And, Deception. And it's, <laughs> it's had its Mortal Kombat... Uh, oh, what was the Justice League? Justice League. Oh, Gambit versus DC. Fucking pants. What that... was the one that was on Anni- Annihilation? Annihilation. Oh, that was awful. Poo. Deception. Poo. Uh, Mortal Kombat versus DC, which was fucking terrible. Awful. Yeah. yeah. Two, two, two of my strongest memories of Mortal Kombat was one was when I was at after school club at high school. They had a Mega Drive, and I took in my copy of Mortal Kombat Two. Um, and the teacher said, what is it? Oh, we, and I said, oh, it's just a scrappy game. And then she watched me rip someone's, nice. <laughs> someone's spine out. <laughs> and then uh, Mortal Kombat Ultimate was actually, uh, I was in Macro. And I was looking through the games in Macro and I picked up one and it rattled. And obviously back in the day, they used to take, well, I presume probably still now, but they take all of the games out of the boxes. Yeah, yeah. So I opened it and the game was in there. I was like, no fucking way. So I took it. <laughs> For fuck's sake. <laughs> and they got a free game for their PS1, I think it was. Or nice. whatever console it was on. I can't remember. More, see, I remember Trip Mortal disc. Kombat 2 as an arcade box at my local swimming bar. So I used to do swimming lessons. And Mortal Kombat 2 was there. And I didn't want to go swimming anymore. I just wanted to play Mortal Kombat 2. Because they swapped it out. There was two boxes there. The Street Fighter box and then the Mortal Kombat box. 
and I fucking hate Street Fighter. I suck at it. I mean, I suck at Mortal Kombat now as well. I'm too old for that shit. Especially as like 11, 100% turned into a fucking frame fighter. It was mental. But I sucked hard at Street Fighter. But then I, I played Mortal Kombat. I was like, this is my thing. I, I can do this. I can play this. I'm, I'm actually okay at this. And that was it. I was in love from the first time I played Mortal Kombat 2 on an arcade box at my local swimming pool. Yeah. I mean, nice. Mortal Kombat is the is the pinnacle of the the classic. You don't complete you don't beat games. You get better and eventually the game just gets more and more difficult until eventually you go, "You know what? I'm going to stop and I'm going to start from scratch." Yeah. Well, Mortal Kombat 2 is the reason that we have games ratings. Yeah, it, that sure is true. Because of the the violence in it, and obviously the the uh, the pretty extreme violence for a game that old. Yeah, yeah, it's the reason Removing games spines, are, obviously. Yeah, it's the reason games are rated now. Although you know, obviously we would have something else would have come along that done it, but it's, Mortal Kombat has that to its name now. Yeah, Mortal Kombat bringing you the the game rating, uh, which just in turn made it so that more games came out that had the ability to be those ratings because I feel like you probably wouldn't have had as many games that have been flirting with the 18 rating as what we've had Yeah, had it not been for the fact that the rating exists. Yeah, you get that in entertainment. You always get people that go, oh, I'm allowed to do this now. Let's do it. I didn't know that I was allowed to put this in games. Fuck it, let's do it in all the fucking games. And anybody that's watched things like a Serbian film know that that's exactly how people that make "Quote unquote entertainment." Uh, think if yeah. you haven't seen it, don't watch a Serbian film. It's worst nah. worst thing you'll ever watch. Yeah, it's definitely a not a Serbian film. Obviously, it's it's definitely a once you know where the line is, you kind of kind of want to work your way to finding your way to moving the line or seeing how close you can get to beyond the line before someone goes you're being a bit of a dick now stop everybody pushes lines and the the, diff- the problem is as well well not the problem but the thing is that those lines always change yeah as a as a almost 40 year old film lover i've watched some of my favorite films go from being 18 ratings in the 80s down to 15 ratings now because the limits have changed yeah, you know, half the you know, the Shining and Terminator when I was a kid were both eighteen rated films, justifiably so. I own two fifteen rated versions of each now. Yep, they were far far. You know, you have to work hard to get an eighteen rated now. Eighteen rating now is almost a killer of itself. Yeah, if I I I do tend to obviously not at the moment because we're in lockdown, but I tend to find if a film gets an eighteen rating and goes to, goes into a cinema. I will go and watch it just to support it. I don't care what it is. Yeah. But, but, like, but, but like, I have a weird line like that. No <laughs> rom-coms for you. Sorry? <laughs> no rom-coms for you. I don't know. An 18-rated rom-com could be interesting. That's called Paul. Well, Jed Paul. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going more with what Lee was thinking there on the... Not, not just porn. <laughs> so I think you need to go to a special cinema for those ones. So... It, I've got a story for, about that as well. As a as a rule, so you have porn, which is generally rated as R eighteen. So R eighteen, you have to you have to uh, show it in a specialist cinema if you're going to show it in a cinema at all. Uh, I have seen an R eighteen rated movie in our local Cineworld. Uh, go on. I went with a friend to watch it as well. <laughs> wow, this is getting weirder. It was the uh, it was the full uncut. Uh, parts one and two of Lars von Trier's *Nymphomaniac*, which is one hundred percent mainstream porn. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the the full one cut version isn't it was R eighteen rated, and it's the one and only time I've ever seen an R eighteen rated movie in the cinema. There you so, go. Okay. Then. Anyways, every day, every day's a school day. <laughs> it good to know, uh, Lee. You're n- I'm going to go with final round. Yeah, well, number one. Uh, it really wasn't any question uh, to what game that I can just always pick up and play. I've been able to do it on this game since I had it. It is phenomenally slick. Uh, Uno. 
Is it Hades? Uh, yeah. No. There's just so many options. There's so many weapons. They're constantly updating it even now. They've had a couple of major imports of DLC, so there's new biomes and everything to go through as well. Um, it is just so good. And I got to a point on Switch where I was just rolling through and rolling through and rolling through. And then it came on to Game Pass. So I picked it up on Game Pass. And then the other day, I just bought it on the Xbox and bought the DLC for it and thought, fuck it, I might as well just buy it all. Uh, and that's Dead Cells. Okay. So it's not Hades again. So it's not Hades again. So Dead Cells, I didn't really bought, I wasn't really overly fussed about buying it on the Xbox back when I had the one because the um, instant on, instant off thing I never had on and the quick resume wasn't a thing. But now that Quick Resume's a thing, and it, even if you shut the Xbox down, it still keeps memory of where you were. Now it's perfect for the Xbox. And it's great playing it on a controller on a big screen instead of handheld. Not, you know, not to do the Switch any disfavours because, you know, it's a great console, but I, I find it actually surprisingly easy uh, on the Xbox in comparison to the Switch. Um, I mean, I finished, I finished the game on my second run, which I thought was pretty fucking impressive because I'm sure it took me about 15 runs to beat the first level when I first started playing it. Um, but it's more to do, you know, that's more to do with knowing the enemies' tells and what they're going to actually do and how they're going to attack you and what they, you know, and that sort of stuff. Those adva- that advantage knowledge makes it it makes the game easier to play um so i've already unlocked hard mode which i'll be starting after i've unlocked a few more weapons and stuff but yeah this dead self no question i could pick that up anytime and i just go oh just do one by him just do one by him and then put it down or and then I get fucking addicted and I'm like, oh, can I knock off work an hour early and just do a bit of Dead Cells before I pick Arthur up? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's uh, it's thoroughly enjoyable through, through and throughout. Yeah, cool. Um, I, to be honest, I, I might actually put Dead Cells, if it's still on Game Pass. It's still on Game Pass, yeah. yeah. I, might, I might definitely throw it on my Xbox just for the sake of it. It's uh, definitely worth a go. I can't promise that you'll enjoy it. It's it's definitely right up my street, but you'll understand by playing it how fucking slick it is. It is so good, and there's hundreds of weapons and hundreds of different combinations of weapons that you can use, and then you've got mutations and things. And then after you've beat the game, actually, I don't even think you need to beat the game. You get options of a... So you can play the game in normal mode, or you can play it in custom mode where you choose the weapons that are going to show up on each map. So you can literally customize the game however you want to play it as well. And it doesn't it don't penalize you anyway. It just lets you do what the fuck you want. And there's daily challenges. Well, there's one daily sort of run challenge that you can do where you have to you get you start off and you pick up a couple of weapons at the start and you have to get through the whole map scoring by killing enemies and beating the boss within three minutes or something, you know. So there's so much to do, even just just to pop in and out of. It's great. Nice. There's not much in terms of story. It there is some there, and it can be found sort of. You better if you really wanted to know the story. You're better off just reading the wiki, though. To be quite honest, it's difficult at best to figure out what the fuck's going on. And because the levels are randomised, you don't always get the story zones in each map. So it takes, you know, lots of playthroughs to get every piece of little piece of story. All right then. But that's not what I play for. I play it just because the same same as you kind of do with Football Manager and such. It's just the time. It's it's a time to do yeah. it. You know, you've got time to just do a little bit. And it's perfect for that. Nice. All right. Uh, so my third and final one and. Um, I know I said that uh, uh, the precursor to this section was to not talk about the these games that we've been talking about a lot, but Destiny 2 is my uh, final pick-up-and-play because especially in the last couple of weeks when I've realised that uh, I know this game really well. Uh, and there's the I was texting Lee the other day about the fact that I was just playing Gambit 
because I actually quite like playing Gambit. I never, I never even thought or cared about its existence up until I started playing it, um, and now I'm actively finding ways of playing it. Uh, I've actually signed myself into a Discord for a clan uh, that's actually quite active, and it's quite fun to play with. They've got um, tutorials, uh, raid runs that they do with people who've not run them before. Uh, just like in general, what you'd kind of half expect the game to have, just built into it that it doesn't have, but people have actually taken it and run with. Um, so uh, it's like, but last week I was like, was, I got home from work and I had like a good about an hour before, like, cooking dinner. So I put Destiny on and just grabbed some bounties and then fired up the Nightfall and just ran that. It's um, it's the Fallen Saber Strike. Last week, and uh, I got the Risk Runner SMG exotic from it. So I then proceeded to then use the after dinner, uh, use the fire teams section of the Destiny 2 app, which meant I could jump into other people playing the Nightfall instead of using the matchmaking. Is that the high difficulties? There is no matchmaking, so it's finding people doing it. And then I was just running the Nightfall again using Risk Runner because that gun is insanely OP for the Fallen Saber Strike. <laughs> Um. So yeah, that was. Yeah, me me jumping onto playing Destiny, just out of almost nothing about four weeks ago has made it my most loved game at the moment. Where I can just keep playing it, just fire it up and play it for a little bit. I'll probably end up playing it tomorrow at some point, just because why not? Yeah, I mean I'm with you on that. I love Destiny, and Destiny Two is great, but. For me, I just I can't have that addiction. I can't have that again because Destiny is all-consuming. It is. Uh, I mean, I'm quite lucky in that I'm just on the outside of it, so I can get away with just doing... I don't have to go in and do every single day and go through and collect all the bounties. Most of the the reason to do bounties is usually covered off in a weekly challenge. So you go in, you collect eight bounties from Zavala, eight from uh, Banshee, and then do a couple of strikes, clear those bounties out, get your pinnacle gear from that stuff, do the nightfalls. You don't have to go in and play everything else, or you can pick up eight bounties from uh, Shax, do the Crucible, eight from the Drifton, do Gambit, run a couple of strikes... You only do three strikes to get another bit of pinnacle gear, run the nightfall uh, three times at the base difficulty, twice at the second difficulty. Of... <laughs> yes, it's definitely not a time sink. It's Sitting not... here reeling off a fucking yeah. humongous list of hours worth of content. It's hours worth of content. That's two days worth of gameplay. <laughs> yeah, like, but or the that's, other side of it. Point, which like, is I can't, that... You can't just pop into it for like half an hour. Because there's you, not really much you can do in half an hour. You need to. It's an, you need to put an evening in to 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 feel like you've had any worth in it. I wouldn't say you need to put a whole evening in. I, you can definitely you can go get away with like, just one strike. Just, just yeah, you go can in, go in, in and do just ball, one strike or just do one it, or, do, or a game of gambit and stuff. But you know, then you get the taste, don't you? And it's like yeah, the first taste is free. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I can I could jump on and play it for an hour and then stop and then do something else or whatever it needs to be if like i might fire it up after this episode's finished um and play it until i go to sleep tonight in like an hour's time <coughs> dead cells <laughs> apparently i need to play dead cells for an hour <laughs> uh but the, 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 the simple thing on it is that it is just for me that now that i've i mean what well, when did it go onto Game Pass? The just before Beyond Light came out. I've been playing yeah, it since it a... November time. Yeah, I've been playing it since just before Beyond Light. A little off and on, but I've just got myself actually feel like I'm caught up. So I actually feel quite confident with it that I can just play, and that's why I've I've been out and I've actually found myself a clan that plays, and I've got myself signed on to do a raid. Uh, on Friday evening. Sadly, thanks for, it's thanks for the invite, bro. Well, 
I would have invited you, but you weren't. But you didn't. Will, you weren't willing to play. <laughs> I did. Never said that. <laughs> Fucking dick. <laughs> I mean, you you seemed like you weren't interested in joining the clan. Uh-huh. When I mentioned it, say that either. Uh, um, I mean, you can join the clan if you want. They like I will they do go next time. I'll come in. I'll come in. I'll be back. I think I'll be back in for a bit next season. I reckon I've missed too yeah. much of this season to want to get stuck into it. Yeah, but um, yeah, it's one of the weird things with Destiny is that there are clan rewards, uh, and because there's clan rewards, you don't need to play it all the time. If you can't, if you can't folk throw a lot of time into it once a week, like. The couple, the day before reset day on the on it, fire it up and then go say hi to uh, Hawthorne and pick up the pinnacle gear that the clans earned because you just you can do that. The the clan levels up, the clan completes objectives uh, and it marks things and everyone gets rewards for it whether or not they were participating or not. Mm. You get another reward for doing a certain amount of XP for the clan per week, but just firing it up and then collecting the stuff is enough of a thing to do for um and it's a, a it's it's the a destiny 2 sanctuary clan as it were so it's literally just the, there's no real competitiveness to it it's people helping people for the sake of helping people play destiny it's a it's a sanctuary as it were so i'm enjoying it for that and i'm hoping to like hopefully i can find some myself some more uh raids and once the game goes cross play i think next season is what they're trying they're hinting towards so i think it's season 15 that they're trying to put it out for that uh there might be more reason to play it with other people because i'll be able to throw on and play with more than just xbox users so yeah it's like as long as as long as there's a way of swap uh, making it so that you cross play. The <laughs> Not PVEs, long until so. the cheats roll in. Yeah, but one loves the PC players. It's I'm not worried about the PC players for PVE because it's not doesn't really matter. But the crucible stuff is going to be will be an issue. But for the oh, most yeah, crucible's part, crucible's just going to go up the shitter as soon as as soon as PC players get in because that's I, just the way of things. I mean, look at fucking Warzone at the minute; it's a nightmare. Yeah. But the thing is, is that Warzone's hilariously popular, whereas Destiny's not. And I don't see many reports on the Destiny Reddit about PC players suffering from hackers and cheats. Because it's... I think it's as a live service game, it's quite well looked after by Bungie. To try mm, and yeah, stuff wait like till it's cross-console then, mate, and that one person who's playing on PC. Yeah. Who knows they're going to have an advantage by just having a little aimbot in there. <laughs> Yeah. starts fucking sniping you from map side yeah I, th- I feel like it's going to be less of an issue than say what with Call of Duty because oh well, obviously yeah of course it will be but, but I think you know, we'll Bungie's, wait and see, I guess. Bungie's issues are on their end as opposed to worrying about people putting in their own mods because for the most part uh, I, it's quite amusing how um, they've cancelled trials this week because of the fact that they put a challenge in last week when the last trials was on, which was complete matches. Uh, <clears throat> I think you had to complete like five matches or something to get a reward. Um, but a completion also includes you killing yourself repeatedly. <laughs> so you just go in there with your fire team and then just purposefully commit suicide to finish the match quicker and get your rewards. It got to a point where there was actually games where there was both teams were trying to kill each other faster than the other team. <laughs> <laughs> so, Classic. But that's what happens when you put in challenges like finish match and the requirements for finishing the match is just that. Not 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 complete a game by having a close four, five, four, win or defeat. You can just throw yourself off the side of the map five times and win uh, and get your reward. There's enough stuff to do in Destiny now that they could remove a large amount of those bounties and just have one one weekly more in-depth bounty for each instead and just yeah. get your match from that instead. Because the daily bounties are just fucking tedious now. 
Yeah, so there are, like I said, the, this season ha- has introduced those weekly bounties as such. But the gene, the best thing about these weekly things is that if you finish one of those weekly challenge things in a week before it becomes available, it auto unlocks it for you. So okay. it could be something like get 200 kills odd Europa. Um, but you might not want to go to Europa that on uh, on a week. Uh, but at the same time, if you've already in week one, you've already did get 200 kills on Europa because you happen to be there. When it comes up in week three, it will automatic auto complete it because you was like you've already done it. You've already finished this challenge, or if you've already been through and completed a mission, or you've already done such and such, it will just it counts it. So it, in the background, it knows that you've done it. It just doesn't. You haven't. It hasn't told you that you need to do it. So, it is kind of cool. Um, I mentioned to Brooker uh, while we were just casually chatting that I was looking at trying to get myself one of those titles. Um, yeah, trying to get the one for Gambit. But uh, as I said to you, I got the four kills that I needed in one one trip into the other team's thing. But because the kill came after I got teleported back, it didn't count. Annoying. Yeah, so I, uh, in one bounty, I got four of the five kills needed, but uh, I didn't get the four kills in one go. I was quite sad about that. Uh, yeah, but that's Destiny 2 on my list. That's me done for my pick-up and play games. Nice. Any, anyone else got any others? Oh, I've got loads. Um, but yeah, I, I dead cells. <laughs> Number one, Dead Cells. Hit, Hitman. Yeah, honourable mentions of Hitman plus Dead Cells. Again, Hades again for Lee, even though he's already said it. Um, now, I, yesterday, I did. Uh, I spent two hours on Hitman playing uh, on one of my favourite maps where I knocked out a load of people to keep them out of my way. Did a challenge where I ended up running around the uh, map dressed as a scarecrow uh, and once you've done said challenge, anyone that comes anywhere near you is set on fire. Once I did that, I killed somebody by dropping a, hail, a bale of hay on them, killed somebody by dropping a car on them, blew someone up with a lawnmower. Uh, <laughs> and what was the other one I did? Oh, just a gas explosion. Yeah. I had some fun on Hitman yesterday. As you fucking should. The, the game is brilliant. And there's so much stuff in there that you probably still haven't done. There is a challenge, and it took me ages to figure this out, and I did have to do a little bit of googling to figure out what I was doing wrong. Uh, you have to you collect ten apricots from the uh, boxes of fruit lying around in Colorado, and a bottle of psychedelic, uh, sort of hallucinogenic poison, and then you go into the into a building. And you feed the apricots to a little blue dinosaur toy. And when you fed it all ten apricots, it disappears in a puff of blue smoke. And then when you've done your job, and you've killed everybody, and you go to leave, if you go to leave where there used to be a quad bike, because you're now hallucinating, that that quad bike has turned into that little blue dinosaur, and it's a little kid's ride-along. <laughs> it's, fucking, um, it's fucking amazing watching Agent 47 wheel his way down the... Uh, down the path, like pushing himself with his feet on this little kid's toy. <laughs> it's fucking I... outstanding. More games need to introduce those hilarious exits. Oh, they but, do. Uh, so, yeah. It's just, here's your way out, by the way. Uh, it's a kid's toy. Or you're wearing off a bingo suit and you fly away. Yep. I love it. Absolutely love it. Um, yeah. But yeah, thought so, I'd share that. And I'm glad you did. <laughs> so, uh, I think that leaves our episode complete. Um, so we've got our usual that we missed when Lee did it. Uh, where can people find you, Brooks? Uh, I'm on Twitter. Come find me at Brooker411. Let uh, it go, man. Let it go. <laughs> and Lee, where, where can people find you apart from your home? 
Um, well, uh, doing speaking versions, William Shatner esque uh, style of Disney theme songs. Going back, call back there for you. How was that? Uh, I'm Pyro Lovebridge everywhere. Julian, uh, and uh, I'm the John underscore CU on Twitter and Xbox Live. I'm Long Dong Silver. But if you only care about the collective unit that is Character Unlock, find us on Facebook and Twitter as Character Unlock, uh, and or just continue to listen to us on your podcast of choice, like you are right now. Uh, so we're done. Um, thanks for listening, whoever you are, uh, and. Guys, say goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. 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 Goodbye.